Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. We're here again with Evaristo Roman for part 10 of his oral history. And today is February 24th, 2022. And I'm Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. And Evaristo, today we'll be talking, at least for the first part, about some of the various places that he has lived throughout his life. And then we'll get into other topics later if we have time. So go ahead, Evaristo, take it off uh, wherever you'd like. Okay, well, I'll touch that one part that you asked about my sister, my my little sister, where I used to be able to stay in her house. Yeah. And, you know, because, like, I was homeless and all that, she wouldn't leave me in the house. I oh, think okay. it was more to do to my, with my brother-in-law. Yeah. But, you know, it was sad because I used to enjoy myself watching TV and all that, and then... When it came around, when it was time to go to bed, like 9, 30, 10 o'clock, I had to leave the house. Yeah, I, okay, I see, I see. So then that's when I had to either ride the trains or look for something. At one time, my nephew wanted me to stay just on top of that little roof. He was trying to give me stuff to stay right there, you know? Yeah. That's one of the guys, he, one of the lives I saved was his. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. You know? <clears throat> and that was Jermaine. You know, uh, he won. He won. He, he won a championship for Kennedy High School oh, in football. Wow. Yeah, nice ring. But again, allowing people to hang out in his house, they stole all his jewelry. Mm. Um, when I was when I was a child, like I said, they didn't take care of me. They took care of my sisters. Yeah, yeah. Right. So one of the first places I remember living was with my grandmother. And I went through that, and I was on, on Freeman Street sure. and Interbell. And I went to the school 54, I think it was right there, or 52, I know, it was a public school. And I got hit by a car there. Mm. And I'm sure my father got money out of it and never told me nothing about it. Yeah. You know? Cause that's what he did. Um, then, after my grandmother died, right, I went, for a while, I lived in, with my aunt, Teresa. She's oh, the yes, one that sure. wanted to adopt me. And that was in Brooklyn, right? That was in Brooklyn, Queens. I don't know, but I saw oh, a lot of Jewish people with those things hanging around, walking oh, okay. around. Okay. Yeah, 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 could yeah, have been yeah. Crown Heights. It could have been anything like that. Yeah. But um, I went to school there, and I, and I did pretty good. Yeah. You know? Uh, she wanted to adopt me. Yeah. She, she loved me that much. She said, why don't you stay with me? Let me adopt you. Let me adopt you. I guess I gave her a hard time or two. One time I jumped to turn on the light and the whole chandelier came down. <laughs> I think uh, my uncle was a sergeant in the police. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, so they were well off. My Nancy, Alma, my, my cousins, and Butchie. Uh, Edgar. Edgar, he, I heard he passed away. Mm. Me and him used to do crazy shit together. He was tall like his father. And I told her, I want to buy a house. Yeah. I have to leave because I have to work and buy a house for my mother. And here I am like five years old, six years old. You know? And I spoke about that on the graduation yeah. when I got the highest GPA award. Yeah, yeah. You know, and my sister and I were talking about that the other day, you know. Because uh, that's a different story. She's not in a good place right now because, you know, um, she, they, they, they found tumors in her head and a tumor mm. by her ear. So she, they, they have, she sent me a picture where they, they put a needle in, in there and they did the culture, I guess. Yeah. Wow. But then after, the, after that, uh, and I remember I came back. Then I lived with my aunt. I remember, no, before that I was living on, uh, while well, I was still in first grade, something like that. Because I went to like six public schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or more. You know, let me see, the one in Brooklyn, PS24, the one in Tintin and all that, that that's around Prospect. Yeah. That we want to, I want to go around, that's where we used to fight. Yeah, right? yeah. Right? Uh... I went there twice, right? I went to 47 in San Lawrence, uh, Elder, El San Lawrence, I think. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. By Shariga, not by Shariga, by Beach Avenue and all that. Oh, up there. Okay. Okay, okay. Park Chester, that just area. before Park sure. Chester, that area. That's when I lived in the Bronx Hill Project. Oh, okay, okay. And that was one of my, my other first gangs, the Seven Hoods. Oh, and because we used to go after the white boys at nighttime. Sure, sure, sure. Because they used to, if they would get us, they would beat the hell out of us. So yeah. what we used to do in the projects, get together a couple of us and go after them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, wherever yeah. we caught one of them, yeah, we would beat them down. But they did that to us. Oh yeah, for sure. I that they had to bus us to school. That's how bad it was, wow. you know, on the projects. Yeah. You know. Uh, that was one another school, right? Yeah. I went to PS4, I think it is. That's right there on Fulton and 174th Street. Oh, okay. By okay. the Katona Park, right across. Sure, 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 yeah. I went to that one. Wow, yeah. Then across the park, when I was in Ho Avenue, that I lived in Ho Avenue, yeah. I think that's PS52. Yeah. Down the block. Yeah. And that's when I remember seeing the where well, we went to the meeting at. Sure. Uh, uh, in the boys club, right that block right there. Yeah. I used to live on that block. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. okay. Yeah, you know, and, and, and that's the first time I remember I saw the dragons or something like that, and they they were tattooing guys. If you you belong to the gang, they were hold one who hold you, and they would tattoo you, and things like that. Then on the other side where I lived. Uh, like Bathgate and all that, that was the Viceroy's, the Mighty Midgets, the Cowboys, all those gangs. That, and I, I, I seen them back in the days, and they were fighting Katrina Park. Yeah, yeah. And in Katrina Park, in Indian Lake, right? Yeah. That used to be a nice spot where they had everybody on Sundays and on the weekends would go and rent their boats and go in the lake and, you know, look nice. And they had little fishes because yeah, we used to fish, fish there. Yeah, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, well, they used to find bodies all the time. I've heard, I've heard some stories about that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they used to find bodies there all the time, so I guess they stopped everything there, wow. you know? And uh, I, I used to be scared as hell, because my father used to walk from one end of the park at night to the other end. Yeah. And I couldn't tell him, show my father I was scared. So I used to just walk with him, but it was dark as hell, man. I know, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, um... Because uh, that's when we need to go to the other side, to Hull Avenue, right? So that's another school I went to. I went to the one in Queens that I don't know, I have no idea what the, what that was. Yeah. I know I used to get hundreds and they would put them on the wall. You know, they yeah. I was a strong kid, you yeah. know? Okay. Um, what other school I went to? I went to PR, of course. I went to Puerto Rico, Puerto sure. Rico. And I went to school, two schools there. Sure. Uh, I guess my... My mother probably was paying for my Catholic school. My father didn't tell me shit about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and then uh, finally, um, because of my behaviors, I guess, because I didn't take shit, I punched people in the nose right away. Yeah. Now, Catholic school, the nun, when I got there, they were punching the ball like this. They were playing punch ball like this. Underhand. Okay. Yeah. I'm from New York. We... We overhand that shit, yeah, man. Because yeah. we used to try to roof it. Yeah. Every time I used to go, pow, overhand, I used to put it over the fence. <laughs> and I'm the littlest guy there. I'm the smallest guy. Yeah. You know, I have a friend on Facebook that he remembers me from Catholic school. I got a picture. So, uh, That's funny, huh? Yeah, because there was this guy named Edwin from Carolina. And me and him clicked. Yeah. So, I remember, I remember, if they found, we used to do things together, we, we, you know, we used to, you know, if he had, I had the matches, he had the cigarettes. Yeah. You know, we, you were just, we used to, uh, while there, we were um, in, in carpentry, we brought in wood to do a boat, because okay. the beach was close. Yeah. Right? And they were doing little Totoneras, you know, for, for planting and sure. things like that. We didn't want to do that shit. We want to do a boat. Yeah. You know, and, and we not, we soaring and we doing all kinds. Then the teacher comes in and he says, what, the, what are you guys doing? He said, we want to do a boat, man. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. No, he ain't allowed. We used to also, you know, they had home economics for the girls. We sure. used to tiptoe. 
for their class because they used to stand in the front while they put the things to bake and everything. Yeah. And we used to throw little rocks in the dough. <laughs> and then we used to just go back and just wait. And when we used to hear all the yelling, uh, <laughs> you know, but wow. the first thing is that the nun, the principal nun, right, the first thing was that guy that when we were playing the yeah. first time, Remember, I'm still learning Spanish. Sure. But they spoke English in Catholic school sure. over there, so. I went, and this guy uh, took the ball. He wanted to play. He just grabbed the ball. And nobody took the ball off this kid. Yeah. Wow. And I said, I looked at this guy. I said, wait a minute. I went over to the guy. I said, let me get the ball for you. Yeah. He said, no, I want to play. I said, the teams are set. You can't play, you gotta wait for the next game. He said, no, I wanna play, I'm not giving, it. let me get the ball. He said, I'm not gonna ask you again, let me get that ball, he didn't give it to me. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Cause I'm from New York, I could fight. Sure, yeah. You know, and, and, and I beat the shit. <laughs> so remember, Kevin School is from like, you know, like, Went from first, second grade all the way to eighth grade. Yeah, yeah. So he, she, he had older sisters that were, they were really good looking sisters. Yeah. You know what I mean? So everybody would baby this kid. Yeah. Not me. Yeah, not you. I didn't give a shit about that. You know what I mean? So we were playing, we were playing the baseball cards where we used to, and bet, if the higher number comes, then you have to bet if you win, you know? Yeah. So I had me a couple of cards, I bought 10. He had a stack. And I'm playing, and now I'm winning, winning. Now I had a stack. Yeah. And then I, he had like maybe 10 cards left, I think he had. So he bet, I said, you know what I mean? You're sure you're gonna stay? He said, no. He bet with the card, and he lost. He didn't want to give me the cards. <laughs> I said, no, give me the cards. You lost, you yeah. lost. He said, no, man, let me stay. I said, no, you lost. Let me get the cards. I'm gonna ask you again. Guess what happened? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So on the first fight, the nun called me in and she says, the principal, what happened? I explained to her what happened. Yeah. She said, okay, you sit over there for like two hours. You know, she punished me, she give me something to do in the office. Again with that one, call me. Every time she caught me doing something, called me to the office. That was almost every week, <laughs> <laughs> right? And the week she didn't catch me, she would call me anyway. <laughs> because she said, I know you did something, I didn't catch you this week. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, you know, it's like, you know, I said, okay. I guess she kind of liked me because I was me. Yeah. And I didn't take shit from nobody, you know? And there was a nun, I had a strict nun. Um, you know. She needs to remember one time there was a girl, Jackie, the answer was on the board. Yeah. And she asked that, she, she called on Jackie and Jackie said, Jackie looked like a little shed type of girl with a big nose. Yeah. And, and, and blonde hair though. And she didn't answer her correctly and the answer was on the board. Yeah. And she said, come over here. Come over here. She was said, everybody says, oh. Every time she called somebody up, something will happen. Yeah. Cause they was they would hit you with rules back then. Sure. She said, "Come on, you don't know the answer like that." No, oh, I just did a little. She got closer. She put her close to the board. She said, see right there. And she. Oh. Wow. Put her head right into the board. Wow. Mm. And on me, we were. We, were, we had a raffle for a, 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 a saint and a rosary in it. Yeah. And the X. So I happened to get the X. But I got excited, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I said, oh, yeah. and, and she said, don't look at your paper until I, I say it. But I looked at it, I got excited. She didn't want to give it to me. And I had, I, I got all stupid, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the, so the nun, I had a nun that would tutor me two hours a day for the Spanish. Yeah. 
because I learned how to read and write it in one year. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 you for know? sure. Cause yeah, in, in Catholic school you have to, you know. So I remember that, and he had sent me the picture. He remembered me. Imagine the impression I made. That this guy, he is a a, a, a lieutenant in 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 the, in, the, in the forest in Florida. Wow. And he ran into my name, and he remembered me. Wow. Yeah. So I had to make some type of impression on people, you oh, know? Yeah, definitely. Because I was good in everything, you know, every sport, everything. That, yeah. I was ready to go to sport because my, I was raised in the streets. Sure. In New York. Sure. And all we did was play sports, you know. And, and it's not like now everybody's, you don't see no kids in the street playing. Yeah. We were always playing, you know. And, and everything that made you faster, and in the whole way in the winter we would play punch ball in the whole way and all that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So all that made you faster and better. But anyway, that that one I went to, and I went into the. Then they put the cut the path. The, uh, they changed me to. Uh, took me. He took me out of Catholic school, and he put me in the public school. And in public school, I had a nice premiership and everything, and the sure. girls were like that and everything. You know, and we, we had a baseball field right behind us because I lived right in front of it, a baseball yeah. field. And we played, and, and I was good at that, you know. But then I got a lot, my father locked me up for nothing, you know. That's right, I know that story. Okay. You know, and that was two more schools I went to, right? Yeah. Um. And then of course you have the schools when you get locked up, you know, you you know, you know, you just, I was in the highest classes when I was in Woodburn. Sure. That's one of the reasons I got out. Yeah. Even though I had an escape. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I escaped from Manhattan State. Yeah. At that time they were doing the French connection. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember you mentioning that, yeah. Yeah. And I came, my sister got married and I came to they allowed me to go to the wedding. We just saw, I knew that was a big mistake from the jump. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I went and I already had missed, once I had the taste of the city, I missed it and I escaped. Yeah, yeah. Know? And so that's, we're counting now Brooklyn, we're counting twice, 124. Twice, yeah. Uh, PS4, PS52, that's four, right? Yeah. PS47, four. that's five. Yeah. Puerto Rico, that's six. And seven. seven. Yeah, yeah, wow. Wow. And when I went, when I was in 124, I, I wanted to go to Junior High School 125. Okay. A lot okay. of my friends went there. Sure. They didn't allow me to go there. Yeah. They sent me to South Bronx High School, which is South Bronx High School. They sent me to, junior, that was Junior High School 38. Okay, okay, yeah. I happened to come back from Puerto Rico, so they put me like an A16. Okay, I see. They thought I was stupid. Yeah. But I was getting hundreds, but then I was getting in trouble too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing chairs out the window, the spitballs at the teachers. Because yeah, like, you get bored. Yeah. You know, um, one of the mistakes that was made here in the educational system was that they couldn't distinguish cultures. Absolutely, I know. The same because in public school, Dick and Jane and C Spot Run wasn't our reality. Absolutely. Our reality was ambulance. Police cars, you know, robberies. Yeah. Well, not really robberies that much, but little things on the ghetto. Apartment you know? buildings, yeah, trains. Yeah, train range, all that. Not, yeah, yeah, not no yeah. picket fence. And <clears throat> so we, we we couldn't relate to that. Yeah. You know? But when I got to 38, I was, you know, very good in sports, too, yeah. because that's why they sent me there in the beginning. For sure. You know, which later I found out because I also, from there, I asked to go to to um, Clinton. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know? And they didn't send me to Clinton, they sent me to Smith, mm -hmm. which was Bronx Vocational. Bronx Vocational, okay. Yeah, At yeah, that yeah. time, it was an old boys' school. Right? 
because of sports. Yeah. What I found out one time with a, a teacher that I fought with in school, and I gave him a monkey flip and everybody laughed <laughs> by the gym, you know? Because my my uncle Ray was teaching us that judo. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he came at me and I just done that. I gave him that monkey, he fell on his ass. <laughs> and everybody was cracking up. But afterwards, I, mean, I seen him in the beach, you know, and, and I, well, I was playing paddle and all that, and, and I spoke to him. And he was a good looking teacher, handsome teacher, you know. Yeah. And he, I told him, listen, do you know why they never sent me to the schools I had? He said, it's because the coaches. Mm. If you're very good at baseball and everything that you were good at, yeah, you yeah. were good at everything. Yeah, even ping pong that was my first set, set of sure, certificate. I remember that? Yeah, you know, um, they send you to their yeah. coaches, and their coaches happen to be in in thirty eight. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. from thirty eight, their mm -hmm. coaches happen to be Bronx occasional. Yeah, yeah. So every coach, you know, so they they send you to their coaches. That way, with the intentions of sending you to the college that they want you yeah. to go to. So their coaches get you up there, maybe to the professional. I would have played professional had I stayed in Puerto Rico. Sure, yeah. Because I was at 15 years old. I was playing in stadiums. But they were paying $2. I was playing for my town. Yeah. You couldn't play for anything higher than that. Yeah. You know, except that when you start... The, the, the major leagues start drafting you in Puerto yeah. Rico, you know? Because when I played in Puerto Rico, I played, they, I had to take my birth certificate, like I told you, everywhere. Sure. You know, because they thought, even though I was the smallest guy, they thought I was older. Yeah. Because I was so good. Yeah. So I, I had to go. Even though what position I played, I still was good. Bad lefty, I was still good. Yeah. You know, because I was a switch hitter, no matter what. Okay. Even wow. at public school. <clears throat> so... Then I played for Puerto Rican Cement. Sure. That was a Pony League. Yeah. Cause I, after after uh, 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 Little League, you played Pony League. Pony League, okay, yeah, yeah. What happened was, from Pony League, I went straight to what you call Double A or Minor Leagues or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, uh, and my father was playing too. Yeah. So they made me a shortstop because my father was playing third base. Sure, yeah. And they thought we were brothers. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that. Yeah. Okay. But because of my stepmother, I just couldn't stay in PR. Yeah. We just didn't click. Yeah. You know, uh, even the guys, even, even the older guys would pick me to play for the money that they used to play against the Italians from 116th Street yeah. that would go there to play for gambling. Yeah. And so forth, they would pick me to play under the lights, you know? Yeah. And at night. So imagine how good I had to be. For sure. And the first thing that my father, one of the first things my father told Naomi when I went to make amends with him. Yeah. You know, because he's still my father. I loved him. Yeah. Even though he never wished me a happy birthday in 40 something years, mm -hmm. even knowing where I was at. Yeah. You know, I had to tell him I love him. Yeah. You know? And I'm glad I did that because when he was killed, like he said, I had big leave. Yeah, absolutely. And the first thing when he started crying, one of the things he first told Naomi was how good of a baseball player I was. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And man, he was really good. Yeah. You know? He would have been professional. Yeah. My father said it. You know, and then when he came and, 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 and came to the hotel to see me, and my stepmother only really came to gamble. Yeah. He had to pay her fifty dollars so that she could come over. <laughs> my stepmother had a shrine of my brother. Yeah. But no pictures of me and yeah. where is all the clippings of me coming out in the papers. Yeah. And that my grandfather when he used to keep was he was my biggest fan. Yeah. He used to go to all the games. And I could hear him yelling my name when I used to bat. Wow. And I can hear him, yo, put it over his head. Cause I'm sure, but I have power. Yeah. So much so that I hit a ball one time. I'll show you one time when we go to do the school um, visuals. Sure. I hit that ball so hard and so far. 
yeah. And, and he always used to tell me, man, put it over his head, because they used to come in, because I was a little guy. Yeah. Like, when we used to play for the company, uh, when I used to work for, uh, on 34th Street, right? They had a softball team, and they we used to play in Comac. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, those guys out there, they also made that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and I was putting it over the fence. Wow. So there was a tall guy, 6'5", that he hit a line drive one time that when I caught it, it drew me back. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He wow. seemed to be very tired. You know what I mean? And, wow. and, 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 and that, that, I caught it, but I went <laughs> <laughs> on one bounce. But, you know, this guy was playing me in, and he was playing center field. And he said, no, 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 no. Get her, go back. By the time he said that, I sailed it past him. Wow. So, the, the, who became to be my father-in-law, which he was my best friend. Yeah. Bro, in the job. I knew all his secrets, he knew mine. And then when I got with his daughter, oh my God, we, <laughs> we, I didn't know how the hell to tell him. Oh, yeah, I remember you mentioned You know, that, that was before. Kathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and, and, and um, he, they, they said, they, they, they said, wow, man, I, I have fun. I got a picture about that around that somewhere. Mm. I got it. I'll bring it to you. I have my long hair. Yeah. <laughs> and number 24, because when I play for the Sarcedos, that's the number I have. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That was crazy. Okay. So, basically, my education. Then I went to college, of course, you know. Sure. Um. And I was going to go to that Audrey Cohen College at that time. They didn't call it Mr. Brown College. Yeah. Yeah. They called it Audrey Cohen. I was going to go that when I came out of Enter. Sure. And I was, but I, it was better that I went now because I, I was more prepared now. Yeah. Because from there, what I did was, since I had graduated from printing trade school. Sure. You know, which I'll, I'll show you the certificate too. Um, I went into that field. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I met him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. That's where you met him. Yeah. 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 And it was crazy, but, you know, we got along. I knew his secrets, you know. (laughs) And I never told uh, him, you know, me and him got along real well. Yeah, yeah. He was a photographer. I did camera work, too, you know. Sure. And I explained to you the system of camera work. Yeah, At that time, yeah, yeah. I don't know process. I don't know if they They're still do elaborate. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went there, and then I went to the fellowship. You know, I was part of the fellowship, fellowship college. college right? you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? That was for when you had to be an ex-inmate to be in there. Sure, yeah. You know? And they help you with your education and everything. I was starstruck when I went to the first meeting. Yeah. Because there were so many people that were used to be in prison that were very up, man, up there in the educational system. Yeah. And they, they were like deans, principals, you know, um, even that, because I have met, ran to some of my friends that they're principals, and they used to do heroin back in the days. Wow, yeah, 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 for sure. I in the seventies in Vietnam area. Yeah. And the heroin and all that. Yeah. Epidemic. Everybody did it. Yeah. Everybody did it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You know? Um those are the places and then I I, well, I live I live those places. But I also lived when I went because of my illnesses, right? They would house me quick. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, one of my first house apartments from from them, not my first apartment was when I was seventeen. Sure, it was I was in sixteen hundred University. They only had like a, two Puerto Rican families, maybe because that was all white. Yeah, 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 all white. Yeah, and maybe three black families, yeah. and that was it. Everything else was all white. Black, and unless you came from Federal Lane down and all that, sure. then it, it changed a little bit. Yeah, you know. It so happened 
that my friends moved to Nelson later on, and I used to date the girl, uh, Oscar's sister, the one that disappeared. Oh, friends. Wow. And I used to be, we moved from, uh, when I was in Sarah, Yeah. they had, uh, 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 they brought a Jewish synagogue, Sure, and that yeah. became the youth component. Sure, sure, sure. Because they had a gym upstairs. They had big, uh, with, I guess, where they used to hold the Jewish thing. Yeah. The area was big, and then on the side, they put the table, and the people would eat. Yeah. You know, they had cooked great, of course. Puerto Rican for my yeah. God, the best food ever. Staff used to eat. Everybody used to eat. Wow. You know? And I just want to tell you, Dennis Ferrigno came in, and he made me um, his aide. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and remember, a therapeutic comes from the one ours came from Phoenix House. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I told you the whole system on that. Uh, I don't know if you told me. You told me a little bit because Phoenix House it, it, is that the the therapeutic community that was in California. Is that no, no, that was that was that was just us. My uh, is um, Cinnamon. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's like an island where you you heard the song Hotel California. Yeah. That is probably what it's talking about. Okay, sure, 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 yeah. Because they have their own island, their own gas station, their wow. own houses, their own everything. Yeah. You know, uh, that was the first therapeutic community. And we had a, uh, a girl that came over with that concept, Ray Dibbles. Oh, okay. And she was kind of a top dog. But uh, a lot of them, the Phoenix House, were inside the prisons, in the jails. Oh, okay, sure. And they were getting them out from there and bringing them to a hard time. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. You know, and then from hard time, I remember Fran Gracia, he was the one that had this concept in mind for a bilingual program. Sure. Because there was no bilingual program. Yeah. And it grew quick. We used to have Parkins and lawyers from the criminal courts and come see how everything ran. So the funding came in. They had a whole wow. floor for fiscal, wow. which was the second floor, with all the secretaries and everything working the money. They got gas stations, their own buildings, wow. their own. Uh, they brought that. They brought the old uh, Andrews house. That was a, a, a veterans hospital. Yeah. They brought that. Yeah. You know, um, they had houses right there for the teachers. Yeah. And that's where I really got my education from. Sure. Because of um, Holly Mine. I never forget. Oh, her. I think you mentioned her before. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah, little yeah, butt. Yeah, yeah. And we couldn't even pay attention because we were all looking at her butt. Remember, we locked in 24 7 and we young kids, our hormones were wild. Yeah. yeah once you yeah, get, yeah. once you take the drugs out the way, the hormones go wild. Yeah. Go yeah. wild. In any addition, um, I was always sent to that. My, my, my apartment was Hamilton Place. Yeah. I forgot the number was 100. 41st in Hamilton, mm. right across from the park. And it was like a studio. That's off of Columbia University. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Right there. And that was one. And then what happened was that I, I was, the whole building was Dominican, basically. Yeah. And they sold drugs all over the place. Oh, okay, okay. And there wasn't too many Puerto Ricans there. There was only like three of us or two of us. And, Carl, and one of the girls was the one that cooked. For them, sure. So she, me, and her got along. Her and I. So anyway, that was that was another one. I lived in the Aish, Aishim. Oh, in Aishim. Okay, okay. That yeah, was yeah, all yeah. basically. That's where all the Irish guys got along with me that like, real well. Okay, yeah. I, yeah. Used to, I used to sell quaaludes. Oh, okay, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and 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 you know, as long as I look, I look Italian, you know, and I look what. So they they they. Cause, and plus, because of my paddleball game yeah. in Inwood Park, yeah. I got there, and they seen my game was awesome, man, and they accepted me a lot faster. And it so happened, a lot of my boys, street friends from the Bronx, yeah. moved up there. Oh, really? Okay. So we were hanging out all together again. Yeah. Juan, yeah. myself, Oscar. Wow. I, oh, you all, you all hung out there, you know? That was another place. Like I said, I lived with my mother. I lived with there. I lived in 174th Street in Walton. And before that, I lived on a, a rock wall, which is 173rd. Okay. And, and that big building, uh, one block over, it, it takes the whole block, mm. that building. Okay. 
So it was very active also. That's why at night I would get hard to drink, you know? Yeah. And, and I would come out at night. That's why whenever I go around there, I always see my old friends, I'll give them money. Sure. Because I remember when they gave me money. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to drink beer, because yeah. I needed a beer. Yeah. And Chino especially would say, here, man, get a six pack. At yeah. three in the morning. Wow. That I needed a drink. Yeah. You know? And, um... So I never forget that, you know. Yeah. Just because I'm doing okay now, by the grace of God, I can't forget those who are less fortunate than me. Yeah. And that helped me out. Absolutely. A lot of people stay away from that, you know. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I got with NA, one of the issues I got, you know. Yeah. Because they talk about people, places, and things, you know. Yeah. And me, there's too many hypocrites inside the book. Yeah, absolutely. The program works. Yeah. But I got really hurt. Yeah. You know, um, there was somebody that I cherished a lot. You know, um, and for the for I remember for the nine eleven thing, I remember I had they sent me a big ass phone bill. Mm. They were charging me for every minute I was on the phone talking. They were charging like I was making calls. Wow. So I got a bill of $711. Mm. I'm not paying that. Yeah. I didn't make that many calls. Yeah. You know? So this person that was very close to me that did help me a lot. Yeah. And even worked with me. She worked at the same place. I worked in harm reduction. You know, say, oh, I know somebody that can get rid of that. You just give him half of the money. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Her, 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 her boyfriend's friend and everything like that. Yeah. And I should have got a hint. But she said, oh, no. When she mentioned, oh, I've done it for Pete Diddy. Huh. You know, he doesn't need that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I did give her the money, 300 something dollars, straight up. Boom. Yeah. You know? But even though I was still getting this design, I was working part time. Somehow yeah. I had more money than everybody else because they, I don't know what they did. Yeah. You know, but they were borrowed for me. And, you know, a month later my bill comes back the same way. Oh, no, that you didn't pay it, this and that. So whatever she did, she just got rid of it for that month. Wow. So when I go to this person and I say, listen, what's happening, man? No, you got to get me back my money. You gotta, Oh, no, you got to take the loss with the good. If I put money in your hand, yeah, in your hand, and you take it somewhere else, you responsible for that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? You responsible for that money. And, you know, she just like pushed it, oh no, you, it's a loss. And right there I said, no. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, this is not going for me. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not going to work. I still hung on to a lot of my other friends. Sure. Like Maria. She is, I just commented on her post this morning. She was my running buddy. Mm. Everybody thought I was dating her. Yeah. Oh, even people that work with me say, hey, you doing Maria? Yeah. No, man, we're friends. Yeah. They taught me how to be a man. Yeah. That's one thing I'm, I'm grateful for, that the girls in NA taught me how to be a man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was going through a lot of shit, and they allowed me, because once I got out of Samaritan, I found out I had a whole other issue, mm -hmm. a lot of other issues to deal with. Yeah. Which was, I didn't trust females. Right? Because females is my trigger anyway. Sure. I really have a lot behind females. Right? Females, I didn't trust them. I needed to know where they were at. Yeah. I would never buy another cell phone for a female again. Yeah. Okay? Um, I had control, like I said, issue. I had trust issue. And then I seen... Um, uh, my, oh, I had to deal with all my loneliness, yeah. my abandonment issues. You know, all these issues I found that I had that were related to females. Sure. You know, 
So I had to learn because first I stood alone for about a year and something. Yeah. Close to a year. Because that's what they suggest you do to learn how to love yourself. Yeah. You know? And I did that. And I learned how to go shopping on my own, learn how to go to movies on my own, I, yeah. everything on my own. Yeah. You know, I went to play paddleboard on my own and everything like that. Then I would have just girls just to be, to have my sex with, this and that always. You know, um, but I had things to do in my life. Yeah. I wasn't ready to settle down, but I always needed a female with me after that because I'd rather do that than be running around the way I used to and get trapped out there. Sure, sure. You know, I didn't do that. You know, um, I remember Maria telling me why I broke up on my first relationship. Yeah. Um, she had kids. Mm. I was working harm reduction, I seen her, she looked at me and we kind of liked each other, you know, and then she lived where I used to live. Yeah. You know, and, and it felt good, you know, having sex for a widow female, you know? Yeah. So, I could have sex, I could have been with another girl, but her friends told me, uh, it was my friend's sister, Yeah. he told me to watch out for her. Mm. So I wasn't going to violate that, that, that friendship. Yeah. And she asked me to go out. She said, uh, she liked me a lot. And she said, she was very beautiful looking, you know, bold looking female, like yeah. green eyes, blue eyes. You know, nice brown hair and threadlocks, you know. And she was nice. And even they, my, they told my mother, I seen her with a beautiful girl. And, but she told me, she was looking at me, you're not ready for a relationship, right? Mm. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. I'm not, you know. Another thing is because of my illness for a while, I I, I was afraid to have sex. Because sure. I sabotaged a lot of nice friends. Sure, sure. Because of my illness. And so it wasn't until I learned through my training and because of the females I've been with that chose for me not to wear a condom. Yeah, yeah. After I took them to doctors with me. Yeah. You know? Um, I said, well, they're not getting, they're not getting sick. Yeah. And then in my job, I will see some of my clients that were married with partners that wasn't yeah. sick. Yeah. And, and I said, what the hell's going on? They would ask me why. Yeah. So my doctors were good because... Since I was working, I would see go there and quick and tell them I'm here and they would come get me because they knew I was working. Yeah, yeah. But they also educated me a lot. Sure, sure. You know? Um, and I would tell them, listen, this is what's going on, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and what I, this is what I believe. I believe like if you're on an I and H, yeah. you don't transmit tuberculosis mm. because you've taken your medication. Sure. So if a person is complying with their medication and yeah. they take it, there are not, trans, you might not be transmitting. Yeah, yeah. Because the medication in you. Sure. You understand? So, however, I did ask, you know? Yeah. And a certain doctor, I learned from all that, but a certain doctor told me, listen, for a lot, for a while, we believed. I tell you, I gave him my concept. Yeah. And he said, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. He said, in addition to that, he said, for a while, us doctors have been thinking, when is the termination ever? Yeah. When is the time? He said, and, and what, what, what I learned from there, they said, what he told me was, for long, we found out that zero conversion, the minute you get exposed, yeah. you can't go get tested. Mm. You gotta wait like three weeks and more. Okay, I see. In order for you to build anti antibodies so they can, the you know, the test could pick it up. Yeah. And then get, con then get confirmed with a Western block. Sure. So what happens is that 
Zero conversion happens. The only people during the window period you can get transmitted when yeah. you don't know that you have it. Right? Yeah. Because you ain't taking medications. Sure. Also, the ones that transmit are the people that are not on medication yeah. because they have a high viral load count. Okay, sure. What a viral load count means that the virus is very active in the body. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to transmit it and from people that don't know they have it. Yeah, yeah. Those are the only three forms. I see, okay. So me, I was taking my medication religiously. Yeah. So one of the reasons I probably didn't transmit was that. Definitely, yeah. And I've been and I've been with the woman I am now going on twenty years. Wow. And no diseases. Yeah. You know, because I check myself well. Sure. In addition I take her with me. Yeah. You know, because I like them to be just as educated. I don't think there's one female that can tell you <clears throat> that they they didn't leave a better person mm -hmm. than what they came in yeah. to the relationship. Yeah. Because <clears throat> even with my last relationship, I, I was educating her and everything, tell her go to school, do this, do that. You know, I don't really want a woman laying in the house yeah. and doing nothing. Yeah. You know, be yourself, do something. Yeah. And a young girl, I don't know if I tell you the story, when I was in printing trade school, there was a young girl that liked me because I was with Papo, one of my friends, that he died, may rest in peace, with a Dominican guy. He was like, like limp. Mm -hmm. But he used to, all the guys used to go to lunch when I went to lunch, and we used to go to Union Park and get high and yeah. drink Felipe yeah. Segundo and smoke a joint and, right, and then go back to school. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, his sister used to go to a school right around there. I forgot, was it Julia Richmond or something like that? Mm. And and so we would see her sometime in Park. So she kind of liked me. She was young. Yeah. Right? And she liked me. And she was pretty, pretty girl, man. You know. But he, I used to go hang out at his house sometimes because he used to live about 100, uh, uh, 70 or 71st Street. Oh, okay, okay. I remember all the way in Audubon around there. Sure. Right? And I always used to talk to her about being a better woman. Yeah. And she told me one time, I never met a man like you. Mm. I never met a man like you because instead of trying to get in my pants, yeah. all you're doing is trying to make me a better woman. Mm. I said, but that's who I am. Yeah. You know, that's who I am. And with my last woman, Somebody said, what happens if she gets a job and she leaves you? I said, well, then she left me. Yeah. You know? Then yeah. she left me. That means she wasn't for me. Sure. But I'm not a friend. For example, the girl I'm with now, Yeah. my lady now, she was making almost twice what I was making. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And I never even asked her what she was making. Sure, sure. When I met her, I always paid for everything. Everything yeah. I never asked for anything. Yeah. Because I'm not interested in that. Sure. You see, when you, at first, I'm glad nothing happened at first with us. We were just friends. Yeah. Then dance partners. Yeah. And we still became friends. Yeah. Then she said I abandoned her when I stopped being her friend. Because I told her that was going to happen. Mm. I said, I'll hang out as much as I could. But when I see I can't no more, I'm going to move away. Yeah. But then every female she seen me with was no good for me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and we spoke and we everything like that. We, we really got along. Yeah, and I never asked her what she did. Yeah. You know? <laughs> One time I showed her I was going, how much I was making on this job and this and that. She said, nice. But I'm on a high tides bracket, she said. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You know, and then even ask her. Even when I moved in with her, I never asked her about her finances. Yeah. She took care of mine because she helped me get my my, my 825 score, oh, 817 sure. score. Sure. All my high, 
you know, credit scores. Yeah. Because she showed me for, for two years I was paying interest yeah. only. Yeah. And didn't know it when she started telling me, look at the principal, look at the sheet, look at this, and this is what you got to do. And I said, wait a minute, all I'm paying is, they're only paying is for interest. Yeah. And they don't tell you nothing. Yeah. You know? I know. The worst you, you do is consolidate. That's the yeah. worst thing you can do. Yeah. My friend Karen, that she was a administrative uh, a, a person in, in Pace University, mm. and she's in that. She told me you always work with the banks. Yeah. Always because the banks will work with you. Sure. Yeah. And I never had some. I mean, and she was making almost double with me. Yeah. Now what I did do. Once I found out her position, I told. Her, Let's go buy clothes. Yeah, yeah. You're going to start looking like an executive. Yeah. You're going to start looking like your position. Yeah. Why? Because if somebody comes and they say, who's the assistant vice president, and they say you and you're in jeans, yeah. that's not a good look. Sure, sure. If you have to go for, to a meeting or something, and you're in jeans, that's not a good look. Sure. See, that's one of the things that benefit me. Yeah. That I was always nice and dressed, and I was always sort of the, sort of the executive director, and I was like they call charismatic. Yeah. Because I didn't call myself that. Yeah. Two directors called me that. You understand? In training. Sure. You know, that's how I learned even the word. I didn't even yeah. know the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, and so, and anyway, I put that place on the map anyway. Yeah. I was playing multi-service. I put that place on the map. Yeah. I became a voting member for the advocacy group that was from the Bronx, from Monty. Sure. Our meetings were in the auditorium <clears throat> with Socrates. Yeah. Or in that building over there. You have the yellow building. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah house sure. over there. Yeah. So, yeah, I get lost sometimes. But, you know, in any, in any event, I, 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 I'm trying to empower females. Sure, uh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I'm not, I used to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. That didn't value a female only for sex. Sure. Uh, I didn't know how to love. Yeah. The concept of love, I did not understand. Sure. Because love is an emotion that must be trained, channeled, and nurtured to develop. Absolutely. If in your first family unit, which is your home, you don't get that, you're not going to understand it. Because remember that study that I did? Now, there's the opposite. For every creation, there's a counter-creation. Sure. The opposite is, you have the, the family unit that has a structured unit. Yeah. That has the both parents. Yeah. That they hug you and they kiss you and they say what you want to be when you grow up. Yeah. Make sure you go to church or you're going to be a doctor, you want to be this, you can be... You know? Yeah. They're going to be somebody. They, they look at life like life is good, man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. When you grow up in my environment where all you see is drinking, yelling, yeah. fighting, screaming, yeah. kicking the dogs, you know? Absolutely. You look at life like life is a bitch. Yeah, yeah. And then with my struggles in the street as five years old, being out there on my own. Yeah. And that's no joke, five years old. Sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I, you know, I just had to learn, you know? Yeah. I had to learn how to bring all that back. And you can't give it to your kids. You can't give it, even though you do love them. You know, I changed one pattern about hitting a woman. I, I, I never really hit a woman. I hit only one. She's had twice. I, 
don't know. But that was it. Yeah. Because she broke that shirt on me like crazy. Yeah, yeah. She just went like a mad woman. Yeah. We spoke about that not so long ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Or, or, I remember yeah, but, about yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? And she taught me about that. She taught me a lesson. Yeah. You know? Um, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that you don't curse at your woman. Yeah. You don't touch her face. Yeah. You understand? For sure. Unless you're going to say, I love you, honey, and things like that, yeah. but not in a bad way. You don't degrade her. Absolutely, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that that's just now because I've learned that, you know? And um, I was talking to one of my kids not so long ago, and she said, why didn't, you're a good man, why didn't we have that? Yeah. Because we were kids. Yeah. I didn't know it. I didn't know. I didn't know how to do that. So every woman I had, which I had good females in my life, yeah. I sabotaged them. Yeah. Because in reality, I didn't know how to handle all that. Yeah. A hug, a hug for me was like, you have to learn. Yeah. You know? Definitely. The hug. Yeah, those are, those are um, techniques I use with my, with my clients in groups, you know, because you, if you take, I need to put somebody in the corner. I put three people. And I tell them, I, I ask questions, and I say, you're moving forward according to the question. Yeah. And you see that no one has, allows no one to come in close. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. they're afraid. For sure. To allowing people in. See, with me, when I would talk to my therapist, one of the things she likes, she doesn't have to probe me for anything. Yeah. I tell her where my pain is at. I tell her where I'm hurting. And I'm honest about everything. Yeah. You know? Because I'm the only the one that's going to benefit from this. Absolutely. You know, and one of the things that my psychiatrist did, well, he kicked me out twice. <laughs> you were kicking, well, a psychiatrist to kick you out twice. Is a bit, uh, yeah, now he got me a third time, you know, and he, and he said, I'll see you every three or four months, man. And because somebody put bipolar in there, mm. and he said, who wrote this in here? Yeah, yeah. You're not bipolar. Yeah. Get that out of there. <laughs> You know, I guess because they gave me the little Xanax when I was getting the panic attacks. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had and to write had to something. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, they had to write something to give you that prescription, I guess, maybe. And they wrote bipolar, and yeah. he, he cracked though. He said, no, there's nothing wrong with you, man, you know. They're not in the room. He said, I like to. You're the only one, one of the only ones that understand what I'm saying. <laughs> you do your homework, which I already did. Yeah. He gives me homework, that guy. Oh, my God. Nah, I did that sleep study that they want. <laughs> but any, in any event, that thing with my sister, you know, I stood in my mother's house, but yeah. then I took shit. Yeah. They yeah. threw me out. Yeah. You know, because, you know, some people could do a drug and put it down. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going on 20 something years that I have, going on 23 years I haven't drank. Well, that's amazing. Smoked a cigarette. Yeah. Well, I haven't did a drug. Wow. When they gave me the acid code, that's why I haven't got a therapist, because I couldn't take it. I yeah. didn't want it. Yeah, for sure. I got off of it. They put me on a sobriety, and I came down. I'm down to two, two. Yeah. yeah. And I'm coming off of that. But yeah. since now, I'm having all, which I see working, the new medication they gave me for the accolation. Yeah. And I'm moving everything to Mount Sinai. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because these idiots, they gave me an appointment the other day. It wasn't even there. That's why wow. I didn't come see you Friday, because remember I told you I had an yeah, appointment? Yeah. I went there, there was nothing. There went there, wow. I went there the other day, on a Thursday also, I told you? Yeah. It was 50 people upstairs, about 30 getting registered. Wow. You think I'm going to stand? No oh, way. hell no. No way. No way. I left. 
And then, so I was talking to my doctor yesterday. It was one of the things I'm gift, uh, uh, I'm blessed because I have the doctor I have. I call her, she, I tell her something, I text her, and she couldn't get, she will call me. Yeah. By the end of the day, she will call me. She did while I was at the rally, and then uh, okay. she told me, call me when I can. Sure. You know, <clears throat> I've gotten better, but then I've gotten worse. Yeah. I have to see a blood doctor now. Mm. Because my vein doctor says there's no more they can do with me, the clots are still there. Oh. <clears throat> so, that's my only fear, you know, so they... I'm in a lot of pain, I, 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 but I talk about it, you know, and I say I'm in a lot of pain. Yeah. You know, and, and I try to explain it just the other day. The day before the rally, that night. Sure. You know, there's a new way I found to clean my nose when I take my pump at night. Yeah. I move my head back. Mm. And when I'm goggling, you know, a little bit comes out my nose. Yeah. Right? And I start to clean my nose. Yeah. I do that for about seven minutes, like eight minutes. Sure. You know, with nice warm water. And it cleans your nose from the inside. Yeah. Because the sinus really bothers me. Sure. At one point, I went like that backwards. Oh my God, okay, my head started hurting. Oh. My eyes puffed out, everything. Wow. And I was felt like I was going out. And I ran out the door and I bumped into the wall. And, and just so Naomi could see me, and when she ran to me, what happened with me? And all my head, was, oh, my pressure started going up. And I was got dressed like I'm going, ready to hit my alert. Yeah. And she's calming me down, everything. And I kind of calmed down a little bit. I see my pressure start going down, I calmed down. Mm. I took the Sanix, that's why the Sanix are good for yeah. that, those moments. And I'm on the lowest dose possible. Sure, sure. They had given me a lot more and I came down on my own. Yeah. Because I don't want to be on nothing. Sure. But there's some medication you just got to be on. Yeah. You know? Now I'm talking about it. It's hurting me. But you know, um, so uh, my head, this hurting the burn, the burn in my nose. And then the pain was going through here in my chest. And I went out that way you call me. She said, that's dangerous, man. Yeah, yeah. Because, well, tell me if you get a fever. Yeah. Tell me if the headache continues. You know, um, because the water could go into your lungs. Wow. And that's dangerous. Yeah, that's you right. Know? So... And, you know, that's, these are the things I deal with on a daily basis, but I keep moving forward, you know? Yeah. Because there's, no matter how bad you are, there's always somebody that's in a worse position mm -hmm. than you. Yeah. Don't complain. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be grateful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be grateful that you're not on a deathbed. Yeah. It's coming up on two years that I was on a deathbed. With COVID, right? Yeah. Wow. On April. Wow. In April, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, on April, I don't know which either, either or. <clears throat> the correct dialect is, I don't know. Sure. The correct pronunciation, I don't know, I should say. You know, but that's why, I'm t that's why I'm at with this, you know. And then I was always talking about, I was talking also yesterday about my family knows part of me. Yeah. Doesn't know all of me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see? Because to them, because I didn't fight my brother-in-law. Yeah. They think I'm a punk. Yeah. But remember, this is a guy I knew when I was eight years old. Yeah. Seven years old, nine years old. Yeah, he's like a brother to me. Sure, sure. I'm a guy from old school. We don't fight each other. Yeah. You don't fight your brother. You don't fight. You know, not in a way where you want to hurt the person. Yeah. You know? And then they see me when I was down and out. Yeah. Then there's other people that know me. Yeah. People that have been in jail with me. Yeah. You know? People that were in the gangs with me. Yeah. They only know one part of you, too. Yeah. yeah. You understand? Yeah. 
a guy my size, in order to survive in the prison system, are you a punk? Yeah, yeah. There's no way you can be a punk and survive. For sure. In the prison system. All the times I've been there. Yeah. They don't even know that I did time under the name of Popeye. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Because I was big and solid and I did my thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They don't even know that. Yeah. They don't know that I did time under the name of Evarito Lopez either. Oh, okay, okay. Because that's what the doc, that's what the cop heard and that's what he put down. That's what oh. I did. Wow. Yeah. I remember sometimes, I read the load, oh, that's me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Wow. They don't even know those things. And there was one guy in the rooms, he came out, he said, that was in jail, and he said, oh, yeah. shit, I remember you, man, you bad motherfucker. Yeah. In jail. Yeah. They don't know that I've been in the house gang every time I've been locked up. Yeah. And to be in the house gang, you can't be a punk. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Know so, they only know one part of me. Yeah. You know? And, but that's the part they judge. Sure, sure. You understand? My niece, the one that I told you that hated me for a lot of years. Yes, 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 yeah. Was because her father died from, oh. from an illness. And then she sees me, she sees me alive and going and doing strong and going to, wow. doing, going to college, doing everything. She hated that. Mm. She said at one point, why couldn't he have died and not my father? Yeah, wow. Mm. And I spoke to her, I told her, I know you're angry at me. Yeah. That's not my fault. Yeah. My, my, my nephew said, that's not his fault. He yeah. did what he had to do. Yeah. Why didn't my father do what he did? This is a man that didn't aspire to nothing. Yeah. And he's a beat on my sister. Mm. That's why I give so much credit to my little sister. Yeah. Being uh, in the welfare system all those years, having with the kids, with her kids. Yeah. Right? And now, see, you can say she's like the director. Of Parks and Recreation, H and R. Oh, okay. Wow. And she could have been hired because I told her go to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, when when the uh, director was gonna disappear, now she climbed the ranks. Yeah. You know, from an aide or whatever, from the web program, whatever it was, all the way up to be in her position. Wow. So I respect that highly. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> she's also ill. Does she does she still live in the Bronx? Yeah, and she goes a lot to. Uh, she's involved in the church uh, with with a pastor that you, that I know very well. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. I see. You understand? Yeah. That one that used to help me to get fun a lot of give me a lot of funding for uh, my projects. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I know a lot about him. I keep it to myself. I don't have to. Tell him what I know about him. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he's done well. He's a bishop. Oh, okay, okay. You know? Yeah. So I, I, I'm not going to throw a wrench in there because sure. I'm not supposed to. He's done what he was to do. He's a good person. Sure. He's sure. a little pain in the eyes sometimes, but he's a good person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I consider him a friend, you know? Um, I was working for him, too. Mm. In marketing. Oh, you know, in the, in the, in in, uh, in, in uh, when he had the pharmacy after he retired mm. from a certain pharmacy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, you know, it, it, it's like um, I I stayed away from my family all those years that I lived in the streets. Yeah. You know. They don't know the way people walked over me mm. in the train. Yeah. They don't know how I just sleep in dark buildings that, that could, they could have killed me at any moment. For sure. 
they don't know how I, I used to sleep in little corners in the park that they would have caught me there, they could have killed me. Yeah. They don't know how I survived the wilding years. Cause there was a years uh, back in the 90s where they were calling wilding. That all these young kids used to go out and catch any bums or anybody sleeping in the street and put them in fire, set them on fire or beat wow. them up real down. I had to watch out for that. For sure. You know? For sure. They don't know how I used to embarrass. I had to swallow my pride because I always had to sleep in the hospitals and, and you know, register to see the doctor just to sleep in the bench and they would call my name, I'll let it go, let it go. Yeah. And then six o'clock get cut out get cut, kicked yeah. out. Yeah. You know, they don't know what it is to at one point when they have real storms and everything, snow storms, you know, my mom would give me a pillow and things like that and I would put sleep in a little corner. We all did, a lot of people did, you know. Yeah. And I have my little corner and I have to run to get my beer in and come back and sure. and sleep there. You know, wow. all, all the humiliations that I had to go through and swallow, you know? Yeah. But to survive. Absolutely, absolutely. And then to come on top, come out on top, where yeah. I was there for my mother. Yeah. You know? Um, all the times that I, I almost died, they don't know all that. Well, my mother, my sister, little sister, just, you heard what she said. Yeah. They should have called me Cat. Yeah. <laughs> you got more than nine lives, though. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I did the same thing in Puerto Rico. I had to sleep out there, you know. Outside. They could have, the they could have killed me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was just a little kid. Imagine a little kid like myself navigating life. Wow. Mm. You know? And I did it. And yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, somebody loves me. Somebody's been praying for me. Somebody, you know. Um, in any event, that was it. Because, you know, I had to leave my sister's house at that time. Sure. And, and then I would say, what the hell? I so I, so I felt good for a little while. Then I had to go to the streets and wondering where I'm going to sleep. Wow. And in this cold weather. Yeah. And in cold weather. That's you know? terrible. Because I, I, I told my aide, you see this weather? Yeah. I had to sleep in the street in this weather. Mm. Wow. I don't know how, I don't know how anyone does it. No one should have to do it. Yeah. But a lot of people do. Yeah, I mean, I and I wasn't survive. mentally ill. For sure. For sure. I was just homeless. For sure. Absolutely. With all the times I had. Yeah. You know? Wow. And all the education, you know. Um, I guess a lot of people say, well, what if you would have became professional when you were in PR? I probably could have died. Yeah. Because I was still dipping and dabbing with heroin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And drinking. I, I made good money. I was going to buy the best shit. Yeah. Remember I told you about the times I just passed out and came to, didn't know where the hell I was at. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, these are things that I, I, I have to look upon, and it hurts me because I could enjoy life a lot more. Sure. But then... That wasn't my plan. The reason it was God's plan to make me go through those things to save the lives I saved. Yeah, yeah. In my job. Yeah, because you had the experience where you could talk to people's pain. Yeah. And because when I, the guys that were came from that were murderers that came from PR that we housed them, yeah. that came into my group in my case though, when they used to hear me talk. They knew exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did they say? He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. When he talks about throwing up and being on handcuffs and crawling under the bench to try to just to get a little bit of breath. Yeah. Because you're kicking a habit. He knows. Yeah. He knows what it is to be out there at three in the morning trying to make money just because you need a fix. Yeah. In the snow. The snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows. You know? I remember the three dogs used to 
put three dogs in and allow them nobody get next to me. And then you saw, the time that I made a little hut. Yeah. In a lot when people used to make little huts. Yeah. And I would allow people to come in and get high and I have to give me something and pay me and yeah. I was so worried. I had two dogs there too. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't they would sleep around me, you know? Yeah. And they wouldn't let nobody touch me. Yeah. Because I think it's the heart. Mm. The dogs know I was a good person. Yeah. In a bad situation. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I remember just a falling like that, sleeping in the summertime when I used to work overnight and, and selling drugs on Prospect and all that. Yeah. And I remember the guy from upstairs just said, try to get close to him, try to get to him. He was sending him to purposely do that. Yeah. Nobody got close. One dog there, one dog there, one there. One dog, all German Shepherds. Right wow. There, right there, right there. Nobody got, the minute somebody came my way, right, 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 yeah. I would wake up. Yeah. Wow. You know? <coughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, the girl, that made she rest in peace. You know, tell me, here, yeah, go buy something in Longwood. The dogs need to wait. <laughs> 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 they didn't like, they didn't like black guys. The men and black guys came to buy. They were, uh, they were no right there. What, huh? they, you know, kept their eye on that guy. Maybe better not make a move. Man, there were three dogs, German Shepherds. Mm. You know, it's a shame, man. It's a shame. But what other topics we got there? Uh, Paradise Hotel. Oh, the hotel. That was a place I lived, right? Yeah. Sure. That was one, the Paradise Hotel. Yeah. That's on uh, uh, on Fordham, that uh, Grand Concourse by movies. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. For sure. I went there and I and they're so active, my God, inside these hotels. These well, okay, I, I lived on that one. I lived on one on Ninety Sixth Street. Okay. Okay, where I used to work with New Jack City. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used to take back at night. You know, a bundle or two. They'd be waiting for me because that was so good. Yeah. You know, and, and we and, and we smoked crack there. Everything be going in all these welfare buildings. Sure. There was a lot of shit going in every one. Mm. I lived on the one on Prospect. Yeah. Right. Also, I went there twice. Um, I, I I I I they sent me a couple of times. They sent me all the way to Rock. Rockway, Rockaway. Wow, somewhere. way out there, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause there was a, there's a place on 156th Street, uh, 151st Street. There's a street like that. That's the way you go and they house you. Oh, okay, 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 I see. Some people that, ain't, that are homeless. Yeah. And they will ha- a bus will take us out every day. Oh, okay. To every night, yeah. you know? Um, I went there, uh, let me see, I was in the, in the, in the, in the, in the in the shelter right there by Franklin, oh, I was in okay. Franklin shelter. Yeah. I was in the shelter on the 168th Street in front of the hospital. Sure. Right. Uh, well, I don't know. That's Fort Washington. Is it? I, don't know. I think so. And there, what what saved me there was right that when I went in, there was this, the guy that was running the place, this big 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 dark guy. Yeah. And he, and he looked at me and he said, you look familiar, man. I said, you too, man. And he said, well, he said, where you from? I said, I'm from, I'm from the Bronx. He said, where? I'm from Prosper. He said, oh, shit, yeah, I'm from Prosper. I said, I said, you probably know my, because he was a little older. I said, you probably know my yeah. brother, Sammy. He was from the Royal Knights. He said, oh, you Sammy's your brother? He said, okay. And he told his boys, nobody fuck with him. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Because shelters are worse than prison. Sure, sure, sure. I know there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that goes on there. Yeah. You know, shelter. Where's in prison? It so happened when I was a supervisor of the Asian Prison Project, I did not allow any of my inmates that were being released yeah. to go to a shelter. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None. Yeah. I will house them somewhere. Like the guy that did ten years for murder, and yeah. then the three years because they said that he sodomized his daughter, which he didn't. Yeah. Cause they got married, mm-hmm. and the daughter was always going to see him. Yeah. So he told me like, look, I only did this because I didn't want to put my wife to a court system when she was like, 
I mean, yeah. my daughter, while she was young, you know? Yeah. So, he was a year after. He already did his time, and then he was still there a year later. Wow. So I called up P.O. Garcia, and I said, listen, what's going on? Yeah. All that, they say they can't house them because mm. of the sex added to it. Oh, okay. So I said, okay, I'll find a place for him. Yeah. And I found him a Muslim place by Morningside. Mm. No, West End. Oh, by on Seventy Second oh, okay. Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I found them a place there. Cause there's also a place I need to send people to. Uh, on the twenty fifth, on twenty fourth, it's called the Castle. Okay. In Manhattan. Yeah, I, 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 you know, you had some there. You house them there too. And it's nice, cause that's right in front of the river. Yeah. Shit. Sometimes some of these places I wish I could live in them. Yeah. You know, but you know. Um, I housed them, and then we had a place, the people that were forming a house called New Horizons in Brooklyn. Yeah. People that worked at Osborne. Yeah. You know what I mean? And would tell me, listen, send me people. Sure. I did. You know what I mean? I have, I have connections everywhere, so I, Yeah. If it was immigration, immigrants, Ryan and I down in the Lower East Side. Yeah. I had any time... That's why I was so valuable where I worked at because, yeah. because they would bring me people for mental health, guys with masters and all that shit. Sure. For me to help. Yeah. What are you doing with a master if you can't help your own clients? Yeah. Yeah, for real. You know? Oh, uh, why? Because I had all the juice. I had all the connection. Every time they threw a block party, yeah, I had to run it. Yeah, yeah. Because I had all the connections, yeah. and thank thanks to uh, the Bronx Head Network. Sure, sure. Because I, I had that's where I made a lot of my this and all my trainings. Every time yeah. I went to a training, I, I network, I network, yeah. I network. I regret the job I had from the hospital that I never took. That was mine. Mm. God knows I probably would have been director already. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I the way sure. I am. You know, I really. Because they pay for your education. I didn't know that yeah, at the time. Yeah, yeah. Had I known that, I would have taken the job. Yeah. Even though it was a night job, I would have worked it some way and knowing myself, I would have been working during the day. Yeah. Because that's what my doctor saying. You wouldn't have been working, dog. Yeah. I told my doctor, he said, oh, what did you do? <laughs> Should have taken that job, you know. Um, doing... Um, rapid testing in the emergency room and health education. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I met him while I was getting my certification for rapid testing. Sure, sure. And he seen, after two or three days, he seen that I knew my stuff. Yeah. And he said, listen, give me your business card. I got a job for you. I need a charismatic bilingual person. That's you. <laughs> And uh, and I seen that you know what you're doing. So when I got the call, they said, look, you come highly recommended. The job is yours. Do you want it? Yeah. Had I not been that comfortable, and I knew what was coming afterwards with that lady that came to be a director. Sure, sure. Because I ran that unit for nine months. Yeah. Without me, but all but need once masters and PhDs and all that, you know. Yeah, yeah. When it's an a infectious disease unit. Sure. Yeah, you know, um, I would have taken the job. Yeah. You know, I would have worked it out. I would have had to knock off maybe two, two jobs, and the benefits are good. Yeah. Mm. You know, I, so th these are mistakes I made, but I guess I made them for a reason. Because I had my case flow, I was so close to them, you know, and, and, and things got worse. And then I was leadership coordinator there. Yeah. You know, um, my director got mad because when they, when, um, when, um, Oasis sent and asked for two people from the agency to become HIV train, train the trainers yeah. and give the case act credits, they sent me, not him. Mm, sure. See, they favored me. Yeah. You know, and basically because they seen the way I was, and basically because I flipped that place around. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that place, I mean, the testing counselors were out there looking for people to test. Yeah. I was there two weeks, 
and they were doing like 37 each, 32 to 36, 37 each wow. a day. Because wow. I taught the outreach team how to do outreach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And 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 when you certify in every area, or you train in every area, yeah, you become so much more valuable. Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, because they can use you for anything. That's why they used to send me, they used to send me to meeting. Yeah. And I used, the guy across the street wanted me for substance use mm. to work there. The director, even though it was in the same, uh, under the same husband, what you said. Yeah. I would have to tell my administrator, look, he wants to make, he made a meeting with me. Yeah. He used to tell me, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Because I got plans for you. <laughs> you know, um, the same guy that was right there, when I was getting the job, yeah, and I got a call, and he said, "Well, you can answer it." And he said, "Oh, um, if you can work for us for eighteen hours for twenty thousand dollars a year, you know, that's what we got for you." And I looked at him. Since my boy Pete was the one that referred me there from the beat, yeah, he, he said, "You heard that, right?" <laughs> yeah, but, said, but right now I can't pay you forty thousand, man. You know, that I could give. You know, I could start you only on this. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, okay, okay, I'll take that. A month later, I was making a lot more than that. <laughs> within three years, I, I, within uh, uh, six months after that, I was making more. And then, like that, within three years, I had doubled my salary. Wow. Yeah. 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 You see, because I was bringing, I was bringing, I used to do HIV testing days. Sure. I was doing World AIDS days. I was doing the Black Party days. Yeah. I was involved with Project Wave. Yeah. I had a closet full of things for the kids, sure. for the, for our clients, because I, I hooked up with all the pharmaceuticals. Yeah. I was acquisitioning all the money I had. Uh, United, the United Way got in touch with me, yeah. not nobody else to become a member uh, of them just by giving them $400 a month uh, for the year. And we can go shopping every month for any supplies they had. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? That came to me. All the other directors came to me. Yeah. I would get deliciosos ice cream. They okay. give me the coquitos for the kids. Oh, and wow. I would get, I had at them rolling. Yeah. Within, you know what I mean? Within, I remember they wanted to do a, a marathon thing, a little short marathon run. And they told me, the board member came to me, and and I uh, asked straight up, I wouldn't do that. Guy Kanye, he came to me and he said, uh, okay, help him out. Within an hour, I had 10000 or $12,000. Wow. Acquisition, not along with all the other stuff that they gave me. Yeah. And then I knew how, you know, 10 for $10, everybody, and, you know, all the agencies, $10 for the 10, so you can put them in. Sure. That was me, you know what I mean? So, I was very comfortable, man. I just don't know, man. And, you know, God has his way. I probably was complacent. Sure. And I probably was scared at the same time. Sure, sure, absolutely. You know? But... I I have to remember a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of other. I I, I lived in Kingsbridge. Yeah, yeah. Terrace. While they were making the Warriors, and I didn't even know that was about us. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. should have went there and said, oh, they seen the guy and said, oh shit, give me a jacket. Yeah. I'm, this is my story For too. For sure. Absolutely. You know. Um, when when I talked about the 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 cross and the switchblade, yeah. Yeah, I was involved in that, and that was right there in the, uh, Rogers Place, and in and, and Westchester, they had a club. Oh, okay, okay. And they needed, I think it was run by one that was Bobby, the one I seen, I seen on the, in that, in that video that you showed me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, and another cop, I think they were cops. Oh, okay, okay. And they needed big Tom Warner, Tom Warner Enterprises. Oh. They're the ones that needed the people that play the guy to my mom's and the bishop game. 
Sure, sure, sure. And I was a mom. Yeah. I remember the last scene was in the Audubon ballroom on 168th Street. Yeah. Where they, where they killed Malcolm X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Right there. That was the church scene where Nikki Cruz actually accepted the Lord. Sure, sure. I was in a sitting in a chair with a lady. They made me like I was a son. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I also did some uh, commercials on Center Park on the ice skating rink. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, for Christmas. Then yeah. I did a couple of those, and they needed kids extras. I remember when we got a check, one hundred twenty-five dollars. Everybody came wow. out the house. <laughs> we getting high. <laughs> you know? How, 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 do you remember about how old you were when, with uh, the filming of Cross and Switchblade? I just forget what year it came out. I'm sure I could do the math, but um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and watch it. See if I can see if I can see you. I I, I, I was a little kid. You little kid. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, it might be hard to. Yeah, I, it was junior high school days. Okay, something like that. Well, I know I was hanging around 133. Was it before or after the Ghetto Brothers? You know? Was it before the Ghetto Brothers? Let me see when it was made. Or when it, was, when it came out. I just forget. Yeah. Um, let's see. And you, you said Ronnie, I guess, was in it as well, is that right? No, no, Ronnie, that's another thing I have that's to tell you. Okay, 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 we can touch on that real quick. 1970s when it came out. Okay, that so, was yeah, it. Yeah yeah, 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 that was it. That was it. You know? Yeah, so it, it was around that time, yeah. And with Ronnie, I was, I was already in the youth component. Right? Sure. And I was working the prevention unit. Oh. Uh, the prevention okay. unit staff, we had the kids from 9 to 9, and then we send them home. Yeah. They had an hour to get home. Right? And he says, come on, let's go out to Free Freeport, Long Island. Cause, for they have a party out there, because he had met one of the Muslim girls, you know, in, in school, because oh. he used to go to fashion arts and design. Oh, okay, okay. He okay. used to draw really good. Yeah. You know, and we went out there, and I remember this guy was following me. Mm. He was enough and looking at me, and I'd be playing the congas in the back, and I'd do this, and I'd dance. I remember I had boleros on, I had my platform, my red platform with the thing, and I had a body shirt, a red body shirt, real tight, when my boleros came up to here, and I had my big afro. And I had my glasses, wow. you know. And I remember, and we went and we danced, and this I go down to the basement, and there's people kissing and all over the fucking place. Every, and I got this girl, and we kissed for a while with this and this. And but this guy always like in the same area I'm at, and looking at me. I thought he was gay. Yeah, yeah. And I told him. So later on in the day, you know, I went to band, I stopped playing congas with them, you know. And and, and, uh, and I told Ronnie, man, this guy's been around me all day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, he didn't say nice to cry. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, everybody. Uh, no, 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 no. You know? <laughs> so he went to his girl. I yeah. said, look, why is this guy chasing my friend? Oh, he's a movie producer. Ah, okay, okay. <clears throat> so, he wanted me to play the part in between two gangs. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. To be like, a, not the trader, but play two sides of the sure, story. Sure, 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 yeah. And he came and he spoke to me, because after that, you know, like, after the girl went to him, he cracked up and he came and he introduced himself to me. He was a yeah. tall guy. And he said, look, I want you to play this part. I've been checking you all day, and you, this part is you. Yeah. You know? And he says, okay, he says, in two weeks, we're going to have the casting party. Mm. I want you to be there. Yeah. Right? So 
So what happens? Ronnie has sex with the girl. Huh. And these are Muslims, man. Yeah. Wow. Huh. So if he didn't go whip me over there, yeah. I wasn't going to feel comfortable. Sure, sure. And because of that, I didn't go. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Wow. But the part was mine. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't stick it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. I mean, not with Muslim daughter. Not with a female, Muslim female daughter. Sure. And they, at Freeport, at that time, was a well-off. Oh, okay, I see. Freeport, Los Angeles, you have to have money up there. I see. Okay? Yeah. I don't know how it is now, but back then, in the 70s... Yeah. Uh-huh. You had to have money. Wow. So, you know, these people... Are, and I didn't want them to hurt me because of him. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't go. Yeah. So I missed out probably out on a movie career. <laughs> wow, wow. Mm, that's too bad. You understand? Yeah. Because he said, he, he checked me out. He said, the part is yours. He already said, you're going to meet the rest of the cast. Yeah, yeah. And two weeks. Shit. Wow. Mm. That was another loss, God knows. Yeah, yeah. You know? It, it, it's like, I had opportunities in my life and, and fortunes and misfortunes and Yeah. Um, my paddleboard came after that, you know, and that that's, that was me after I, I got clean. Yeah. You know? um, because, but I tell you, if it wasn't for Sera, that gave me an outlook in life. Sure. I would have been lost. Yeah. You know, I would give credit. I ended up being a promesa. And when I was in a, um, a detox in St. Vincent's or St. Luke's, St. Luke's, and the guy, Felix Vasquez, the one that took over, yeah. said I and changed the name to Promesa, mm -hmm. I had told him I was in Serra. Yeah. And so he said, he sat me down in the office and he had three names more or less picked out. Sure. And it was going to be Project Serra, Project uh, Promesa. And he had a couple, and I said, no, Promesa is the, is the best, yeah. the best fit. Yeah. You know? Okay, yeah. And um, so I ended up there one time, and he remembered me. And said, yeah, he come to my office. Yeah. Said, you know, but I had left. After I got myself okay there, I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, stay there. But at the end, I, I went there and everything, and, and one of the girls that went out with my brother said, what are you doing? Because <laughs> I went into Casa, Casa Provence. Yeah. You know, because I, I left from Woody Crest. Sure. Because Woody Crest is an HIV house. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And I went there. There was people there going when I was on the methadone program, you know? They were busting there. Mm -hmm. And there was a girl that was gay. Yeah. That she had, you know, she had it. Yeah. And I remember two of them, you know, you know, that two of them that, that I, 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 I hung out in their house and everything. Sure. You know? And uh, they called me to a living room one time. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Sure, sure, sure. So, um, because that's something, all my life, I have had gay girls that wanted me. Mm, yeah. Uh, most of them to put, become their father, to, yeah. be, uh, to become the father of their kids. Yeah. Three of them. Sure. You know? And uh, the last one was because she always liked me. Yeah. And I learned something with her before I went into Samaritan. I don't know if I said that. Mm. 
because when I, you know, when I actually was going to bail myself out of jail. Yeah. And the bed came for Samaritan. Yeah. Right? And I helped them find a place for me to get my methadone. And, and I had money. She knew I was going to get high that day. Sure. You know? But I ran into her, and we hung out that whole weekend. And she said, please come back Monday. Because that's when the bed was going to be available. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I knew I was coming back. I wanted to come back. I, wanted, yeah. I was dying for a change. Yeah. To, to get my life in order. Yeah. You know, and and, 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 she, and then what she told me was, I said, why are you always, she said, because you have always made me feel like a woman. Mm. You you know how to make a woman feel like a woman. Sure. That's why I've always liked you. Yeah. Even though I'm gay. Yeah. You know, and just like Daisy, that fine ass girl from our toy history, which we were by there yesterday. Yeah. And she was a fox, man, and she wanted my son. Yeah. You know, man, you know. But, you know, life is what it is, man. I think it's, um, uh, anything else you want to cover there for today, so then. Uh, I think uh, this is a good place to stop for today because yeah. we covered a lot of, um, we covered everything under uh, one category and a couple things under a couple of other categories, so. So yeah, I think that's a good place to end it today.